Hello everyone, welcome back to Channel One. Today it is just me. Spectrum is unavailable, so we're playing a little bit of Magic just to see how we get on. We're playing on my account, not the Channel One account, because I know Spectrum will get very annoyed when I tank all his stars. And we are playing White Weenie deck, just a White Weenie deck, standard one. Or it was standard before the Loris version became extremely popular. Uh, but I wanted to see how a non-companion Weenie deck compares in the current format, because uh, playing Loris means you throw away a lot of very powerful cards. A lot of very, very powerful cards you can't play, so you're forced into substandard stuff. But is the consistency of the companion worth it? We'll find out shortly when our opponent decides whether to play or not. This is one of those cards I was talking about. Uh, this is quite an expensive hand, and you, as you can see, there's no mana. That is what you call an automol. Land, stuff to do, a giant's pride might get quite large turn too. So that is a keep from me. Uh, on this hand, probably put back a land. Uh, we don't need too many to operate. And as you can see, not punished in the slightest. So it looks like a deck, a black deck. I mean, brilliant analysis there, chat. Only on channel one. Yes. See, normally uh, you would want to attack first, see if he does anything, wants to damage this. But there is a but this time. A Gianni will become a 3 3 if I drop him and then attack with the lifelink. But him being mono black, there's probably quite a lot of removal in there. Ah. Uh... So the choices are, do we drop a Healer's Hawk? I'm gonna f it's a lot of damage. We are the aggro deck. Let's stop playing around stuff. Let's just slap him. He had nothing. So not punished in the slightest. That is important. Ah, there we go. Punished, completely punished. Um, I mean, It's going to be dangerous to overcommit, so I'm not going to do that. The lack of other stuff to do. This is where. This is where you'd want to just drop Loris and be like, and whatever. That's probably the least valuable of the set. So let's just end the turn. Always keep a mana open so you can brick his spells uh, with the sacrifice ability on Elseid. Each, that can choose controller. Okay. Well, that could be a bit of a, a ball leg. -like. Ah! We'll take that one, please. And get our damage in. Off the top! Answering his off the top. Don't you like it when that happens? Of course, he might have a way of getting rid of Banishing Light, but that's three damage we got in that we weren't expecting to. Okay, Soren's Thirst there. A little bit of removal. Really sort of needing that extra land now. And our opponent has something open. You can tell by the fact he's not skipping all the way through. He is debating on removing one of these bits and pieces, I would suspect. Potentially flashing in as well. But he's thinking about it, so... Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows? So you watch this rope burn slowly down. We attack with both. You're going to take the damage? Are you going to... Yeah, that's what I thought. We'll play the extra uh, LC it out and end the turn. You gonna do something? He's thinking about it. Really could have done with that extra land, because this mutating on would be quite useful. Knight of the Ebon Legion is something we need to be quite wary of. 
Okay, so now we can't get rid of it either. Ugh. Why must this game irritate me so? Ah, so what are my choices here? I can enchant creature plays or when enchant permanent dies or it's put into exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. So we could banishing light this, drops the thing off, but then it just comes back and nothing much is gained. Hmm. We could exile target non land permanent. Convoking a bunch of stuff. So, what are we going to take? Knight? Uh, we'll take Kaya's ghost form. I think that's the sensible selection. He will pump and uh, start getting this guy large, but we're on quite a lot of life right now, so I'm not particularly bothered. An option there, if you've got this mana open, is to sacrifice the Alseid to give this pro black and then uh, protection for black when nothing comes through. Um, is this supposed to be a dim ear list this whole time? Yeah, do your pump, I don't mind. How many times are you going to pump it? Just the once, that's fine. He gets a plus one, plus one. This is what makes Knight of the Ebon Legion such a dangerous card. Bloody hell. And I mean... <sighs> we'll just take this one away as well. I mean, it would be nice to have some land. It would be nice. I suppose technically better to do that uh, after attacking, but... We have the board presence at the moment. Though we're one easy wrath away from losing it. So the old midnight clock comes down. Siren's thirsty, yep, something's just got shot. So what happens when it... Uh, uh, when the 12th hour, shuffle your hand and graveyard into your life within draw 7. Okay. Ah! Glorious! We will put you over the top. Oh, that would be very nice. We could tap everything and exile this, but it's not a problem yet. We can do that next turn. So we're going to get this damage in. Start to actually put a clock on the guy. We've drawn all our sort of exile effects, and it took us so long to draw a land. Yeah, that's the price. That is the price of mutate. You do leave yourself open for that easy two for one. Uh, all right. So which one do we take? We didn't want more land. It's a shame, isn't it? So this needs to get to the 12th hour for him to draw seven cards. We can keep doing three a turn. However, we can... Begin of your upkeep, deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. That's probably more irritating. Um... We'll take the inheritance. Because uh, he is also out of cards. He's relying on as many top decks as we are. And yeah, you can get that fast. But if this isn't, isn't a wipe, we can keep chipping. Because he's dead in three turns if we do nothing else. And he does nothing. And I don't think he can get that. Be five, six... Seven, eight, nine. It might get there. A bloodthirsty aerialist is a pain. 
That is a pain. Sure. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It'll get there. Just. Let's see what we get. Now we probably hit that. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. Shame we can't flash it in, but we are going to mutate onto one of these cats. And make more cats. Let's go over the top. Uh, now choices, choices, choices. I think we just swing with this because it trades. Um, he's got no way of gaining life right now. If we attack with this, he just blocks here. And we get in four and change the clock slightly. Um, I think it's an all attack because then he can, only, he can only block one a go and next turn we can swing for quite a lot. So, as they say, maths is for blockers. Uh, yes, that is the correct block. We'll take the life. So, hopefully that isn't a way... It's a land. That means we should be getting through to the next... Ah, oh, excellent. Yeah, sure. We can get three damage through. So we've just about eked this one out. Good game from our opponent. It wasn't really that good a game. We just gained a lot of life but did nothing. None of the synergies happened. None of the synergies happened. Now, time for the sideboard. Didn't even get to see my little spice I put in. Um... No companions to worry about here. Pro black is going to be quite handy, but it is a human, so mutate isn't very good. Fight at one is good. Um, I think the protection from black stuff is going to be the most useful, so we don't need these very much. Put in two of these. Let's get rid of some of our removal. Um, into just straight deal with black cards. Um, that being the, because the Conclave Tribune is probably a little bit better. Do we have any creatures entering the battlefield from their outside that cause triggers to happen? I don't think so. No, I don't really like having one ofs in this kind of a list, so I'd rather have a couple of fighters one. So what to trim for the other one? Probably the Broodmoth. Probably my good old friend Mothra. That's what happens when you try and add your own little spice. Just immediately cut it. So, fingers crossed for a good game. Fingers crossed for a good game. We are waiting on our opponent. He's deciding whether to play first. I assume he will. He'd be a bit foolish not to. Now, this is two lands. So if he hit a land, I think we're in reasonable stead. Because this into this is very good. So we just need to hit one land. We've got another turn to hit that one land. That's not it either. Apostle. Or Daxos. Apostle. Mana Geode? That's an odd inclusion. Absolutely never punished. So now we get to see Heliod. It's indestructible. I don't think they have a way of dealing it with it unless they have some exile effects. But that's okay. We have backups. Alright. So the old ill-gotten inheritance is down. But this is going to disgust everyone. We gain life, which means we get to start pumping. And I think this game is over. I, this is what this deck is supposed to do. Sure, next Lotus. Uh, 
Uh, I think you're dead. Is there a way for him not to be dead? Because we will attack with three. No, that's so much damage. Good game. Good game. So that's what the deck is supposed to do. It's supposed to be extremely aggressive. Blast the opponents before they can do anything. Oh, rank two. Nice. You have noticed we are playing mostly on the channel one account rather than our own ones. We keep, we're just flying up those ranks. All right, let's jump into the next one. Hopefully we'll have... Before we jump into the next one, let's crack this DAC. DAC? Pack! What do we hit today? Catch your triumph. Nice. Good land. Good land. Can never have too many lands because they are irritatingly... Whoa, what are we doing? Traditional standard ranked. Mono white. There we go. So a Chandra fan. Hmm. We'll play first. We have lands, we've got stuff. That's a life linker, makes this guy big, straight into Heliod on three, and some reasonable removal. This is a very good keep. Uh, if they do nothing, though it's probably, well, based on the Chandra, everything, probably some kind of red deck with no land, interesting. Straight into discard, extremely strange. Discarding Temple of Deceit. That may have been an oops moment from our opponent, but we will hold back in case there's some crazy strategy on play. Um, uh, you can get a bit bigger. Uh, they're dead. Going to be dead very quickly. Yes. So some black I saw there, some blue, black, white, um, but I have no idea what they're doing. None at all. So we'll just go for a touch extra protection and we, we'll see what they do, but I don't really know. I don't really know what to expect. They missed their land drop and then uh, finally dropped one in tapped and then quit turn three. So, that's just shrugs for me. Uh, into a journey. It's not quite as good as the previous hand with no one drop, but it's got the lands. Double banishing light. I think we can do better. That's probably a bit better. Three of these is too many. So we want to keep lands. We've got something to do. It's a shame they're both four drops. But that is the way of it. So maybe we'll be a touch slow out the gates. So now we're threatening what we did last time in huge damage. Uh, so hopefully we draw a two drop into a three drop into a four drop. Evolving Wilds. The budget fetch. I'm not a big fan of Evolving Wilds. Fighters 1 is useful. Um... Um, well, we might as well drop the second one out. They can protect each other. Uh, though in reality we'll probably just use Fighter's one. So you've got the three lands. That was a shock, so what's coming down? Winged words. Just to draw. That's not a good sign for our opponent. Not a good sign at all. No early drop. So we're just going to have to rely on the old... The old beat downs. So, Skyland, that's okay. Oh, uh, yeah, that's very okay. So, I suspect some control aspects are going to come in now. Uh, we can afford one, two, three, four. We'll probably, we're going to jam a Jani here. It's going to probably be counted. Look at how many cards they have. Um, 
that was likely to happen regardless. Um, but they're expensive counter spells. He is slowly losing life. And another Scryland. I'm... I'm yet to really see what's going on. Thief of Sanity. Deals combat damage to a player. Look at the top three cards that plays live. I'll exile one of them face down and put the rest into their graveyard. See, now we're going to do what is known in the business as a combat trick. Are you going to block? You're quite low life. You might be tempted into it. If you do... Very comfy, really. Uh, we'll mutate onto... Doesn't really matter, does it? Over the top, get our Cub Wardens. A nice little Kitty Cats. Cute art on those. Ah! Walked into the Wrath. Now who looks dumb? No cards in hand, no refill. Fully tapped out. We're actually going to have to just... What's the difference between making... Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Ah! We just a touch too slow at the gates. Getting a Jani countered there was probably the mistake that's cost us this game. Uh, fine. Four mana open. Kaya's Wrath. I presumably bounce this. Let's slow this down. Let's slow this down. Yep. Yeah. This game is probably over. But it depends quite a lot on what is on the top of my library. Linden. Not out of it just yet. But Mega, we may have to see some combat trickery here. Agent of Treachery. Gain control of target permanent. So let's give it pro blue. Took my land, which is a bit of a what could be described as a dick move. Uh. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. But now he's got infinite blockers. Yep, that game is over. He just blinks. This takes this. Well, now we've got more of an idea of what he does. In come the Hushbringers. Uh, the Banishing Lights, go down to two of those. And let's just hope for a slightly faster... Faster go! Maybe not quite getting my mulligans right. Uh, this could be rubbish. Yeah, that's... we can do better. That is also rubbish. But we'll keep this six. Let's hope we don't draw any more lands! That land is fine. Uh, probably go Daxos here. You may think why, but this will be a 4-4 when I play it next turn. With protection. Can you counter it? No. You can just sort out his draws, which is very useful. Ooh. 
So, if we can swing in next turn with Linden and this board, uh, the game is over. Exile, target non land permanent, and opponent controls. The being indestructible gets us nowhere, so we just need to sack the Elseid. Sure. We'll give it pro blue. That seems pretty good to me. We've still got the protection open. So... If he does try to wrath... Are any of these guys humans? Cat soldiers? Legendary... And a demigod and a human. So he can protect two of them. I don't think that's going to quite do it. Because that is 11... 13 damage. And that's what happens when you play with Agents of Treachery. Nobody likes you, and you get blown out. Nicely done, nicely done. Let's do another. This deck's feeling okay. But I can see what... Another pack? Don't mind if we do. What do we get this time? Sea Dash Octopus. I like that card a lot. Um... I don't think we're going to get a pack next time. Maybe a free card at some point. Um, but... Yes, I think a couple of mistakes so far. One, playing a Ajani straight out into the counter spell that we could have predicted he had open. And... Yes, yeah, some uh, a couple of timing issues, but... Nothing major. Not bad for a few goes with this deck. Whether it's better than the Lurus version... That is where I'm not sure, having not played the Lurus version. You did notice when we got uh, wiped in that uh, second game against our previous opponent, we had no way of refilling and, and getting our, our board back. But if we had the companion just sat there in our sideboard ready to rumble, then and then be able to get everything back out of our bin again, that can be quite powerful. So let's go first, let's go first. I think this is okay. We might actually get to see Mothra do something. Um, it was what it was my solution to the lack of draw. As long as it isn't a total wipe, you can attack in. Say you attack in with Daxos, it dies. Mothra brings it back with flying. Uh, that seems that seems good to me. Uh, whether it actually is good or not, I don't know. This guy's called Malicious, and he said hello to me. So I'm assuming he's not malicious. He's just a nice guy. Maybe misunderstood. It's Cat Oven, Rectos Sacrifice. Everyone hates it. And yet, we all have to endure it. So what comes now is the Cauldron Familiar. If he has it, I'll be extremely irritated. Ooh, Stomping Ground. Paradise Druid. Well, that is a touch unusual. We'll just drop the castle. Hmm. Well, he's not going to block. We can't target it. So we have to take away the Witch's Oven, which might be the way to do... Which might just be what we do. We'll play this. We should have attacked first. But there we are. We'll just gain this life. He might take the trade. I doubt it. The doubt was well placed, shall we say. Mayhem Devil. And Cauldron Familiar. Should have taken away the oven. And trust me when I say we're taking away the oven. 
So, whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, Mayhem deals one damage to any target. What you do is you tap this to sacrifice this, it keeps coming back, you keep sacking it, this keeps doing the damage, this keeps doing the damage, and eventually you kill your opponent. So we've got to take it away. We've got to stop him doing that. We've got to stop him doing that. Uh, we'll just pay using our mana for this one. So presumably, take away that. You tap in response, that's the correct thing to do. This is why we should have attacked first, they've got the extra damage in. We'd have got two extra damage in. He's not indestructible, so. No attacks this time. Whoa, what was that? Got a lot of mana open, our huh, boy. Trail of crumbs. Make some food so you can start to sack this boy. I'm not too worried about a little bit of food. Uh, no blocks for me. No harm in attacking here, we've got quite a lot of life. Or is there? This dies comes back, he can do... 3 damage, 4 damage to it. Yeah, let's do it in that order. Strange to do it that way around. Oh, to activate the crumbs. That's probably the right way around to do it. Wicked Wolf. We've got our food synergy switched off. Smart. The attack there was the mistake. Almost certainly cost us this game. Ugh. Ah, uh, yes. No blocks because you can do the same ping thing. Uh, we tap these two, that's one, two, three, four. Not quite enough to make a token. The token's probably just as valuable, but this comes back. Be no downside here. So is Mothra gonna win us this game? That is the question. I've gone silent. Silent thinking, or at least wondering, what am I doing? Now, this is the problem with this deck. As you can see, there's very little refill. So, uh, force us to fight. Kills this. Okay. I'll just block the carbon familiar here. Which I'm sure it's very exciting for him. As anticipated. The 
He's got to go. Oh, looks like you're all mouth and no hands. Token. Constantly blasted by those guys. Let's hold it back. We can at least trade off here. We'll keep making tokens for that block. Um, it would be nice to draw something that, you know, does something. Eight lands is quite a lot, given this deck has 22. And there's 45 cards left. Uh, it's slightly too many. Let's not forget to actually activate this, get our boy. Some might say it's slightly too many. No harm in this attack. And the turn. Bluff that we have something when we don't. We clearly don't. Just draw lads. It's madness. But then so is our opponent, to be fair. Let's see what he does. Is he going to attack? He's thinking about it. Taking away the oven was smart. Fine. Another land. Well, that's something. I already can see my extra land. It's always worth holding something to make them think you got it. The non Solve. Fine. slap my turn that's my that's actually make the token that's four that should be four I'll take away mayhem devil no point attacking with anything else So we see what he does now. Without their food synergies, not so good. Not so good. Mystery card over here. Could be good. Could be another land. Could do something. Might be a wipe. Uh, my turn. We'll just do what we usually do. We'll make a fresh token. And it's a Ajani. Ajani does something. So you come down. Attack with both of these. I know he gets to do this. But it comes back, gains life, becomes big. We go into the next one. I don't think we deserve to win that. I think we were both equally screwed. But Jonathan Magistrate is going to be pretty good. Here. Uh, we don't want him casting anything out of his graveyard. I'll probably cut on one of these banishing lights. Cut the brood moth, probably. Cut another cup warden. Not got too much power. Uh, I think you're greater. But the apostle is also going to be quite useful. Turns them right off. Most devout decree. Probably more so than. Uh, Flashing light, devout decree. 
May have over-sideboarded, we shall see. But I think this is quite a good answer to their deck. But obviously, only one way to find out, and that's to actually, you know, play the game. And if you don't play the game, no chance of winning. Top one, channel one top tip there. So, yes. One thing I've done without Spectrum, my man in the box alongside me, is forget to remind you to like and subscribe. I mean, there's a huge number of out there, a huge number of you out there watching who haven't. And we know, we can see the analytics. So please do hit that button. It does support the channel a lot. What else you can do is uh, join the Discord. You can uh, follow us on Twitch. You can do all sorts of things. And I promise you might play some more exciting decks than this one, but this is easy to win. Uh, let us know if you have any other suggestions of other games we could play. We normally play Hearthstone, sprinkling a bit of magic. And we could do... What else? We play Stellaris on this channel, Two Point Hospital. We played quite a few things here. Now, this hand looks pretty good to me. Man, maybe should have cut the Enforcers. They're a bit rubbish because they don't have too much to cost two or greater. Um, but the rest of it is decent. So I think we keep this. It'd be nice to have a life linker into a Jani because that is the aggro start. Green into hopefully nothing. You might have a Boreal Grazer or something like that. That would be a bit of an odd inclusion. But I suppose you can just sack it later on. So our turn one is just going to be Plains. Rune Law Enforcer followed up by Castle Ardenvale. Rune Law Enforcer, unless we see nothing else. Do we do it? Do we slap the BM your go? I think we do. Our friend Malicious may be a touch salty after the last game. Imagine losing to Mothra when nobody plays it. Imagine. <sighs> I don't know why you're so angry. Our hand isn't that powerful. But it can cut. This card is amazing. Um, but with Ajani down. And we've got Ajani's. We've got infinite Ajani's. So he roped. So... He's used up one of his ropes, so we shall see how he gets on this time. He spent three more minutes thinking about his turn than we have. Oh, friend, don't do this. Don't do this, friend. Is he short on lands? If he doesn't drop a land, do we give him the oops? We do give him the oops. He's taught that by a well-known magic player. But nothing tilts more than an oops. And it tilts him so much that he switches emotes off. Can't handle it. He just can't handle it. So he's no doubt kept a pretty good hand. Bar the land situation. Hoping to draw into something or a second land. But hasn't. But hasn't. Well, I can't help him with that. Give him the oops. Ah, oh, we can drop the castle now. We will drop the castle. We'll drop Elseard. We won't drop the other one straight into a wrath. But it's land, Linden. We've got backups on Linden, so that's fine. Oh, friend. Oh, friend. So, while we watch this guy uh, deliver more salt than the River Galilee into the Dead Sea, it is time for you to like and subscribe. I've already told you that, but do it again. It's that constant reinforcement, that constant reminder. And let us know what other decks you'd like us to play. We do play a variety. This is probably one of the more simple decks to play. Though, as you can see, it's still perfectly possible to make timing mistakes uh, and things like that. But... Our friend Malicious is not going to do any climbing of the ladder if he's going to be this salty. And we're going to be nicely into gold one, something like that. I don't think it matters too much. Uh, he's going to have to discard as well. Ooh.
we might have to give him the nice. It's a free win. Feels a bit grimy to win on that. So maybe we'll squeeze in one more. Maybe take that tilt wherever we are in the thing. We might take that. Whatever the next rank is. Platinum or something. We'll have a run at that. Gold? Platinum? Diamond? Who knows? Free card though. Ocran Assassin. Death Touch. A 1-1 one, one for 3. Garbage. Garbage. Uh, yeah. Oh, and this is a bonus game just because that guy got so salty. Hopefully it'll be over quite fast. Uh, two power hands from us would be ideal. Um, oh, our friend Goldberg GT in bronze. This is a bit mean for him to be playing us. Uh, but then we drew this hand. So, oh, what? Two six landers in a row. That's slightly better. Bit in a land and probably Mothra. I just hope we draw into something decent. Oh, that feels rough. If there's any kind of discard in Goldberg GT's deck, we are boned. Is any kind of speed of thought in Goldberg GT's deck? We are also boned. 29.35, 29.26, and ticking! People don't seem to realise there is a timer on this. What? They spent all that time for their mulls. Alright, we've got our healer's hawk out the way. Forest into! Hell Collector, it's a stompy deck. It is a stompy deck. So, Pelt Collector uh, stuff gets bigger. So, we need to out stomp the stompy. Lucan Druid, that's a okay with me. Yeah, that's literally fine. Land. Heliod. All attack. I think he's just looking to ramp into some huge stuff. Um, we'll make the Healer's Hawk larger. Spread out the damage. So if he has single target removal, for example, a plummet on the Healer's Hawk. Um, he won't be targeting this one. No, if he has only removal that removes flyers. Whatevs. Whatevs. Uh, we're not doing anything next turn. We've got another planes. Clan Guild Mage. So, target which you can't block. Target land becomes a 4 4 with haste. Alright. Alright. He's hoping for the big old blocks here. Oh, nice. A rabid bite. Probably a mistake to attack. We're just going to drop the Elseard of Life's bounty and attack with Ajani. Bait him into blocking. We're going to gain a lot of life now. Feels good. Feels good we can deal with most of what he'll chuck at us. We're 24 life, which is not what a Stompy deck needs to see. We don't even need to do any blocks. Another Rabid Bite would be irritating, uh, but not the end of the world. Well, double Heliod is what some might describe as too many Heliods, but attack with this. You gonna block my friend with your gruel stompy deck? Okay. So 
So you're looking to clan Guild Mage. Very nice. Very nice. So it becomes a 5-5 trading this off. Protection from green. Single target removal now here is going to be pretty damaging for us. Uh, but that land probably wasn't it. But now he can turn lands into attackers. He has one, two, three, four, five mana open. So he could play quite a large guy. Uh, just the aggressive land strategy. I mean, you might as well attack with it. You've made it after all. I think a more appropriate play would have been to hold that. I don't think he blocks. But we are at such a huge life total. Oh, we'll put it on Heliod now, just in case you actually draw some stuff. Um, let's drop the planes, why not? We can still make this life link. We can pay this to be a life linker. I don't know why we would want to. Yes, exactly. Our friend appears to be on a. Not too worried about Hushbringer in this one. Devout Decree could be pretty good. But he's casting everything from his hand. No black. This could come in handy. Just chop down. I think we can easily drop two rule and law enforcers for two giant killers. It's whether we want fighters one uh, to deal with his combat tricks. I think it's probably worth it. Probably over a banishing light or two. That's all we need to do. And it also helps squeeze us through that extra bit of damage. It's amazing how powerful uh, Heliod is with the Jani. It's just... it's If it isn't answered early, you lose. But then that's the downside of this deck, is that if it is answered early, we lose, because we struggle to refill. But that is where I can see the advantage of the Loris deck, because you can just play them again. If I could put an indestructible counter on Luminous Brutnoff, perfection, but I can't. So we'll just have to deal with this. Uh, our friend Goldberg GT is making his decisions about what to do against a mono white deck. I'm fairly certain there must be some white hating decks at the moment, though it may just be anti uh, Rakdos Sacrifice and anti Yorion Looker. Um, I suspect Mr. Goldberg is also playing, or Miss Goldberg, I should say is playing a budgety deck. So may struggle to find the perfect answer to, to what we're doing, but if he can't find the perfect answer, he can't find the perfect answer. Meanwhile, we get to watch this spin around. I was hoping for a couple of quickfire games with someone who knew what they were doing. Um, but clearly that wasn't to be. Clearly that wasn't to be. We're still waiting. We're still waiting. Why are we waiting? Our friend has run out of time, he used up his two minutes, and uh, he gets to choose whether to go first to see what kind of hand he does. I think for his deck, you'd be very, it's very, very rare that you'd ever choose not to go first. Uh, there are some reanimate type decks in other formats where you don't go first, you discard your boy. Uh, to hand size next turn reanimate it and oh look a turn to grizzle brand or something like that how about this it's all right this is an all right hand for us we need to draw into some lands because you've got quite a lot of four drops there but we have controlly bits here oh actually do we need that land we could get blown out we could get blown out if he has an aggressive start
Because this is a three, 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 four. But we are just doing planes into probably playing out. Um, just it, just play out the guy as a one, two. It's a convenient blocker. Never punished. Never punished. That is the advantage of the adventure cards. Uh, in that they do have this dual use. There's nothing to target. We need something to do turn one. Double red. Uh, from what we've seen, his deck needs a lot of green. So... Hidden two mountains probably aren't the lands he would like to see. I think if he tries to destroy it, we do uh, protect it uh, just for that tempo swing. It takes out a piece of removal that could be used in a journey, something like that. And uh, we can keep chipping away. Um, as you've seen with how much life this deck can gain, we're not too worried about a couple of swings. Uh, if he starts to build a giant board, then we start to start to worry. Um, oh dear. That's not a good sign. I think we just do Daxos here. Cancer's a human, cancer's a non-human. Fighter's one is very good in this situation. Followed up by uh, either Linden or Heliod. Uh, I feel unless our friend hits the right lands, this game could be over very quickly. If he hasn't, it's not looking good, is it? Shock. You bo uh, are you bothered? Am I bothered? Now nah, that can resolve. The downside to having it killed. Uh, But we're the one doing the damage here. We're the one swinging. It shouldn't be this way around. Three red lands. Really not what our friend wanted to see. But see it he has. Let's get some pumps on the go. Bait out some removal if he has it. Give it life link. A five five and a three five is pretty tricky to deal with. Uh, there's a lot of do four damage removal, uh, lava coil things like that. But it's getting a bit too big. There we are. It got too big. Good game there. Good game. Does that get us promoted? Yeah, there we go. You get to see me enter Platinum. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? Well, just going to say thank you very much for joining me today. Um, we'll be back with the usual service with Hearthstone and Spectrum tomorrow. Uh, live on Twitch if you want to join us there. Um, failing that, we'll just see you next time. Fly to the Equinauts. A seven, an eight mana Convoke Flying 4-5. Garbage. Actually garbage. You tap your entire board down for a 4-5. Don't play this. Don't play this. Uh, but we'll take that XP and that gold, and we shall see you next time.